yeah. specific. Okay. Well, the question was, were they wearing the school uniform? Oh, okay. Got it. Oh, okay. yes. And I did have a picture of the establishment. Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. Asif in London wants to know about review embargoes. Uh, I have the impression that review embargoes generally uh, used to end earlier than they do at the moment. I can remember reading reviews and being disappointed that the games were still a week or two away from release. I, ne- I rarely notice this anymore. I understand that publishers want maximum hype just as the game is released, but sometimes a bit of notice is welcome. Case in point, I've slowly lost almost all interest in the Call of Duty franchise as it's gone from innovation to diminishing returns to completely stale. Having now read the reviews of the latest game, I'm actually going to pick it up because the reviews all hit on release day. I'm now scrambling around for a copy rather than actually playing it. If you have an inkling that your game is good and will review well, why not get the word out at least slightly sooner? Uh, first, to probably address the general review thing, the embargo question. Like, I don't remember there ever being a time that, like, embargo timing was standardized either to release day or beforehand. I think it's always been, like, a very much like an 80-20 split of release day versus occasionally earlier. Yeah, I feel like, it, by and large, it's been release day stuff yeah. and kind of always has. Yeah. Uh, and that's something where, you know, like, regardless of that, like, the... The data that we built over the years uh, at GameSpot definitely showed that most people were looking for review on release day. That it was that thing of like, this game is out. I want to know if I should buy it right now or not. Yeah. Let's go look for a review. And so the putting up a review a week early, actually, like from just a, a raw business perspective, was worse. Yeah, uh, because it would have gone up and been out of the system, off the homepage, all the other stuff by the time people started looking for it. So it actually wasn't; it was less useful, uh, generally speaking. Uh, to speak directly to Call of Duty, I think running a review earlier than uh, we did would have actually been pretty irresponsible, mm. uh, because we're talking about an online game, and yeah. you need to kind of see it under real circumstances, at least for yeah. a little bit. That was a weird situation because of their day early release, because. Didn't the game technically become available and playable before yeah. the review market? So that's that's actually one of the other kind of frustrating things that is you know very much non-standardized is that they you know the the, the stuff that we agreed to was midnight Pacific time, um, you know, and you sign that stuff to get the copies of the game and blah blah blah, um, and then you see that you know oh wait it's actually releasing on the West Coast and East Coast time, um, and that's frustrating. Uh, but that's one of those things where it's it's kind of more of an oversight because people don't like to think about time zones and do the math. And by the time you realize that that's happening again, it's too late. And you're like, oh, fuck, shit. Well, all right, maybe next time. Yeah. Uh, you know, and this used to be, you know, keep in mind, like embargoes used to be like 9 a.m., 10 a.m. And some of them still are yeah. on a Tuesday. And that stuff was more meaningful back when the only way to get it was to wait for the store to open. And right. Go. Yeah. And, and you know, the the... The advent of the midnight embargo has definitely picked up a lot of steam. Yeah, because of steam. Yeah, uh, over the years. Nice. Um, that was good. Thank you. Um, um, but yeah, there are still companies that try to say like, ah, ten a.m. morning of or six a.m. Yeah. and you know, and and that stuff's like, yeah, there's nothing standard about embargoes. Yeah, like it, it, ultimately, it, it's just been you know, you get a letter with a thing, and this is this is what it is. Yeah. Uh, and then if it's something insane, then you like go back to them and go, no, this is nuts. Like, yeah. what are you talking about? Like, Activision used to try to embargo games until Wednesday. I remember that. Okay, yeah, you yeah. get a you get a copy of the game like, and a letter that ago. said like, run it Wednesday morning. It was like PS2 era or something right, probably. Right. And you used to be like, fucking no, <laughs> it'll be out for 24 what are you hours. Talking at that about point? it. Um, but in this case, like you know, the the three hours between nine and midnight uh, were actually really useful for yeah. me to do kind of like my final checks on live servers. And I mean, the servers have been up for days and there have been enough people to play team deathmatch, uh, but most of the playlists were empty. So actually having the game go up at nine, um, I probably would have ended up holding that review until a little closer to 12 anyway, just to check out the other playlists, make sure that that stuff worked, you know, over real network circumstances and not just on a LAN, um, which is, you know, what I was able to play like a week ago or whatever it was. Right. Um, so yeah, it, you know, it's, it's one part, you know, it's one part like an embargo, but I, th- I think it's up to the, the outlets the, the, our, ourselves to really do the due diligence. And, and there are some outlets that just want to be first. Yeah. Um, and they'll, they'll cut whatever corner they want to get it. And that's, that's fine. It's a valid approach. I think it's risky. Um, you're, you're playing with 
uh, whatever trust your audience has put in you when you do yeah. that sort of stuff. Yeah. But, and also the race to be first is kind of an endless war of attrition, you know? Yeah. It's like a, you can it's never really, let up because yeah. some other outlet is always going to be there when you're not. Right. And, you know. So it's just, it's, it's exhausting. Yeah. It's like a, we it, used to play that game and it was, it's hard. It just fucking sucked. And then, yeah. you know, I, I never wanted to run reviews that way because, you know, we, we wanted to make sure that reviewers had enough time to review games and not always just rush for the embargo. We, we would hit them more often than not, yeah. but, you know. Like, it's nice to do when you can, but yeah. you never want to compromise the quality of the review for it. Yeah, yeah. So it's, eh, all that stuff's really weird. Um, yeah, it's getting weirder because of things like the Monday night Steam unlocks because, you know. Yeah, and then you end up with, like, the weird, like, set your region to Australia and right. get it 18 hours yeah, early. And, yeah, a lot of streamers are using yeah. VPNs. But, you know, we would end up, you know, we wouldn't end up seeing people streaming or putting up screenshots of games and stuff days before an embargo because someone somewhere had broken a street date and sold copies. And, you know, that used to be the thing that would trigger us calling publishers and going, like, look, it, it's on sale in North Dakota. Like, yeah. what the fuck do you want us to do? Like, we have to fucking run this. And they'd be like, what are you talking about? It's North Dakota. The state barely even exists. <laughs> That's a direct quote. Yeah. Um, I'd be like, well, I guess I see what you mean. <laughs> um, no, it, it, it's, yeah, that stuff is always weird. And it, it's it's something that people are still adjusting to. Publishers yeah. are still adjusting to. I want to say Bethesda now has everything yes. embargo till 9 p.m. Monday nights. Uh, Monday nights. Basically when it when it goes on sale on East Coast. Or unlocks on Steam on yeah. the East Coast. Yeah, the, yeah. I would say they, they have probably been the first to, to hit that consistently. Yeah. Um, um, and it's just a matter of like everyone needs to kind of realize that, that that's how they Usually it's, you'll run into a lot of cases where like the PR people setting the embargoes don't even fucking know that the game is going on sale 9 p.m. Right. Um, so in this case, you know, you could call them up and go like, Hey, this thing's gone long. And, be, and you, you might get someone to go like, what are you talking about? Yeah. No, it's not. I'm like, no, I'm, I'm reading the thing right here. Like I pre-ordered a copy of call of duty on PS4 to get that black shader for death. Man, that's such a good, <laughs> and, fuck them. um, shader rules. <laughs> and, God uh, damn it. it said right there in the text that it unlocked at midnight Eastern time. Hmm. Uh, and they had their countdown timer and all the other stuff. Yeah. yeah. It, it, that stuff's yeah. It's. You know, digital games on consoles are still kind of coming together. It's, yeah. it's still sort of yes. a, a weird thing. People are, everybody is still kind of fumbling their way through it. Yeah. But generally speaking, like, you know, people tend to look for reviews on release day. Yeah. And, and that's usually the, the actual best time to have them. Totally. Totally. The, the last thing I'll say about it is that I've seen this bizarre resurgence lately in the idea that, that having an embargo set till release day means the publisher thinks the game is bad. Yeah, I don't understand where that came from. I, I, I think it's I just, either. you know, you end up with like a lot of people that spend a lot of time on message boards just throwing conspiracies back and forth at each I, other yeah. and, and somehow they all hit upon this one again. I, you know, I mean, the, the anticipation. Decades later. Yeah. Um, yeah. The anticipation for certain games like runs white hot in the days leading up to it and a lot of people are like, you know, maybe grasping at straws going like, oh, they don't want us to know because it's bad or something. But yeah, I know, it's, it's the only the only con like consistent indicator that a game is bad and the publisher knows it is when they don't send it out for review. At exactly. All. Yeah. It, yeah. do, do if we it, don't get it ahead of time, then you can probably assume it's like it's not terrible. screening a movie. Well, it's not. Even, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and that's not just like if we don't get it ahead of time. I'm not talking you know, about anybody. But anybody, yeah. yeah. If, if it's a widespread thing, yeah. You'll totally always see that sidebar in newspapers and stuff like, oh, you know, so and so studio neglected to screen this movie for critics. Yeah. And it's always like horror films and stuff right. that they know that critics are going to be like, this is dog shit. Right. Uh, it's you know, the same I mean, as true with games. You know, like, one, and it doesn't even happen that much anymore. Yeah. But once in a blue moon, something doesn't get sent out, and then you know. Well, do you think uh, it benefits a game like Bayonetta 2 to where it might not have been on some people's radars and then reviews went up like three weeks prior and reviews were pretty much across the board raving? I mean, do you think that helps? Uh, I think like it, it, maybe it helps pre-orders or something like that. Or like, like hey, if you don't have a, a Wii U a, yet. A, yeah, or, yeah, maybe maybe it, it sets people up if they need to get hardware or something like that. But uh, I don't know. That, that ends up this sort of a weird... Maybe they wanted it to serve as their marketing when they had no marketing budget. Yeah, mm -hmm. th that can definitely be a part of it. Because uh, they knew that the game was good, yeah. They yeah. knew that reviews would be positive, right? Yeah. Um, or you could end up in a situation where I, I don't think Bayonetta two was in this situation, but if if your game is coming out the same day as something huge, like let's say someone was shipping a game this week, you know, going up against Call of Duty, which is just going to dominate like a news cycle right. uh, headlines for a little bit, then maybe you want to have that review hit a few days early, and just so it's out of the way of that shit. Yeah. Um. But then you're just getting into like PR and marketing theory, and that's I don't know enough about that stuff. And you're better off. Yeah, I don't want to. Just keep it that way. Yep. 
That's oh, the thing. Right. You stare. You stare at it long enough. You start to figure out why they do what they do. Yeah. And, and then, then you're one step closer <laughs> <laughs> to uh, the edge. Uh, like, ugh. Find yourself standing on the the ledge yeah. uh, out the window. You gaze at the abyss. Mm-hmm. Hey, gaze it back. The abyss says for immediate release. <laughs> <laughs> Your soul, Colin. 